After nearly two decades of plowing its way up from the economic abyss left by the Cold War, Russia suddenly finds itself plunged back into the depths. Apparently, the only cause seems its February 2022 invasion of Ukraine. But there's more to the story than meets the eye. And the twists and turns might just leave you astounded. Russia, anticipating international backlash for its actions like the annexation of Crimea in 2014, had been playing a long game. Over the years, it amassed a colossal war chest of over $600 billion, a strategic reserve aimed at cushioning the economy against potential sanctions. Think of it as a financial armor against global reproach. However, in a stunning turn of events, Russia lost access to half of this treasure trove overnight due to unprecedentedly harsh sanctions. It's like watching a high-stakes chess game where one player suddenly finds half their pieces frozen. But why did Russia not foresee this? It's simple. Underestimation. When Vladimir Putin annexed Crimea in 2014, the international response was tepid. Primarily led by the US, Russia thus did not brace for a robust global reaction to its Ukraine invasion. But the West had a different plan. By freezing Russia's assets, they delivered a financial masterstroke. It's a classic case of expectations versus reality, where Russia's calculations went awry. And the consequences were severe and immediate. To stave off economic collapse, Russia had to resort to drastic measures. Imagine shutting down your stock market for weeks, fearing a mass exodus of investors. Then, picture hiking interest rates to a staggering 20% in a desperate bid to save your currency. Despite these efforts, inflation soared, hitting the Russian public hard. But there is an underlying fragility to Russia's economic might. Heavily reliant on oil and gas, which constitute around 40% of its revenue, Russia's economy lacks diversity. It's like putting all your eggs in one basket. And when oil prices fluctuate, the entire basket is at risk. This vulnerability has not only economic, but also geopolitical ramifications. In a bid to safeguard its interests, Russia has actively worked to deter Western countries from focusing too much on clean energy initiatives. Consider Germany's predicament. Heavily dependent on Russian energy, Germany found itself in a diplomatic tightrope, hesitant to fully support Ukraine initially, fearing repercussions on its own energy security. It's a classic example of economic interests dictating foreign policy. Turning the pages back to 2014 to 2016, a period marked by a significant capital flight from Russia, trust in the Russian economy waned, triggering a financial exodus. It took Russia two years to recover from this crisis, but the current situation dwarfs those challenges, shaping up as an economic catastrophe with long-term repercussions. Central to this narrative is President Vladimir Putin's economic strategies which have been steadily reshaping Russia's economic landscape over the past two decades. Putin's approach, reminiscent of the Soviet Union's economic model, has been a double-edged sword. In 2003, a pivotal move was made when Putin took control of Yukos, Russia's largest oil company at the time. This takeover was emblematic of Putin's broader strategy, consolidate power, control wealth, and exert influence. The Yukos saga is a tale of power play and intimidation. The company was slapped with an astronomical $27 billion tax bill, a move engineered to transfer its assets to the state. This was not just business. It was a display of authority. The company's assets were seized, sold off at minimal prices to state-owned entities. Mikhail Khodorkovsky, Yuko's CEO, was imprisoned, setting a clear precedent, cross Putin and face severe consequences. The strategy extended to other Russian oligarchs. Those who complied prospered, while dissenters faced exile or imprisonment. State control over key sectors, particularly energy, became the norm. Companies like Rosneft and Gazprom rose to prominence, closely aligned with Putin's circle. But Putin's control had another side effect. It deterred foreign investment, creating an environment rife with red tape and corruption. Despite these challenges, Russia still offered opportunities for small and medium-sized businesses to thrive, provided they stayed under the radar of the Kremlin's gaze. The arrival of Western businesses like Nestle, IKEA, and Adidas signaled a burgeoning Russian middle class and a seemingly cordial relationship with the West. However, 
Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022 marked a seismic shift. The exodus of foreign businesses is a significant blow to the Russian economy, estimated at a staggering $200 billion. From Nestle suspending sales to British American Tobacco exiting Russia, the impact is profound and far-reaching. The departure of financial giants like Societe Generale, Deutsche Bank, and JP Morgan exacerbates the situation, isolating Russia from the global financial system. Perhaps most symbolic is the suspension of Adidas sales in Russia, a brand deeply ingrained in Russian culture. The withdrawal of payment giants like American Express, MasterCard, and Visa further isolates Russia, affecting both inbound and outbound transactions. The exodus of foreign companies from Russia has not just been a financial blow, it has triggered a domino effect, impacting jobs and the livelihoods of millions. The unemployment rate in Russia, which was relatively low in March, has skyrocketed to over 9%. The road to recovery seems arduous, with expectations that it might not dip below 5% for an extended period. The stark rise in unemployment is a direct consequence of the sanctions and the withdrawal of the foreign businesses, leading to a notable 10% drop in sales across stores. In a bid to stem this economic hemorrhaging, the Russian government is injecting approximately 466 million USD, 39 billion rubles, into the economy. This emergency aid is aimed at creating temporary jobs and funding public projects. It's a strategy reminiscent of the United States' response during the 2008 financial crisis, which saw billions invested in job programs and benefits. However, in Russia's case, this sum seems minuscule for a nation of 144 million people. With foreign investment and business unlikely to return soon, this financial band-aid might only offer short-term relief. In a more drastic measure, the Kremlin has moved to nationalize many businesses previously operated by foreign companies. An example is a transformation of McDonald's outlets into the state-owned, family-friendly Uncle Panas, complete with a strikingly familiar logo. This move aims to preserve jobs and income by replacing foreign operators. However, concerns about intellectual property rights are cast aside, as Russia opts not to honor the copyright or IP rights of businesses deemed hostile. While the idea of replacing foreign businesses with Russian ones might seem like a feasible solution, the reality is more complex. Russia lacks the financial resources to support these businesses independently. Additionally, the allure of brands like McDonald's or KFC isn't just about who runs the restaurants, but the unique products they offer. Simply changing ownership does not guarantee the same consumer appeal. Moreover, this strategy may deter future foreign investments. Companies are hesitant to enter a market where their ideas and products could be appropriated without respect for copyrights and intellectual property laws. This reluctance could leave Russia lagging in innovation and investment further isolating it from global economic trends. The impact of these economic woes extend beyond financial figures. Russia's middle class faces a grim future, with potential echoes of the economic struggles experienced during the Soviet era. Despite efforts to make Russia self-reliant, the exodus of talented individuals, artists, intellectuals, and skilled workers undermines the country's competitive edge on the world stage. Looking ahead, Russia's economic outlook appears bleak, barring a dramatic shift in Putin's policies or an unlikely global forgiveness for its actions in Ukraine. Russia risks becoming a second-tier country in Europe, isolated from the rest of the world. The looming threat of Western sanctions on Russia's energy sector, the backbone of its economy, could precipitate an economic contraction of over 20%. Even if Asian countries like India purchase some Russian energy, it's unlikely to offset the long-term economic downturn. As we watch these events unfold, it's clear that Russia's economic journey is fraught with challenges and uncertainties. The path ahead is rocky, and the global ramifications are significant.